Next up, I am thrilled to introduce Marta Belcher, who is a pioneer in blockchain law and policy. Marta has represented cryptocurrency projects, exchanges, industry associations, and civil liberties groups. Marta serves as outside general counsel to Protocol Labs and special counsel to the Electronic Frontier Foundation. She advises, advises the Blockchain Association on legislation and drafted its amicus briefs in the SEC's lawsuits against Telegram and Kick. Marta has been called a blockchain law pioneer by Forbes, has been on the Financial Times Innovative Law Lawyers List twice for her blockchain work, and was recently named to Law 360's list of top attorneys under 40. Marta is a member of the Filecoin Foundation board and is here to introduce the Filecoin Foundation to the world. Take it away, Marta. Angie, thank you so much for that introduction. I am so excited to be here at Filecoin Liftoff Week to talk about the Filecoin Foundation and the Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web with the community. Uh, I want to start by telling you a story about a small mix-up a long time ago that made me start thinking seriously about what it means for the internet to be centralized. So there's an ebook competitor to Kindle called Nook. And back in 2012, people are reading War and Peace and they notice some irregularities. Throughout the book, the word Kindle had been replaced with the word Nook. So you're reading War and Peace and you see that someone nooked the fire. So clearly what happened here is someone uploading this to Nook did a find and replace to replace the word Kindle with the word Nook, like on the title page. But they inadvertently replaced it throughout the whole book. And it was funny at the time, but it was also disquieting because in 2012, it made me think about what it means to experience so much of our lives through a handful of large corporations and to have no choice but to trust those corporations, to trust that the copy of War and Peace they serve you is the original, to trust those companies not to misuse troves of data about us, what we do online, who we talk to, what we click on, what we say, to trust them to keep that data safe from attackers and to protect our civil liberties when responding to requests from governments. This was a small incident a long time ago, but it was the first time I thought about what it means for those corporations to be fallible. This was 2012. Since then, so much has happened. Uh, the Snowden disclosures, Cambridge Analytica, the US presidential elections, and these issues have come to be at the center of public discourse. There are all sorts of proposals for addressing these concerns, many of which involve heavy regulation. But these proposals, in my view, presuppose that the internet needs to be centralized, that these internet inter intermediaries are inevitable. But why? Why is it that our internet has to operate like this image on the left? Why is it that if I wanna send a file to someone sitting next to me, it has to be sent across the world and back before it gets to their device? Imagine a group of people who are together in a remote place, maybe a quarantine pod. If they wanna to talk to each other over the internet, that data has to be sent across the world. And if that connection to the outside world is cut off, they can't communicate with each other, even though they're all close together using devices with unfathomable computing power. Why can't they just be connected directly to each other? This centralized model also creates a single point of failure. And that's particularly concerning when you think about the fact that file storage right now is basically a monopoly. So much of today's internet relies on Amazon Web Services to store and serve billions of websites and applications. We've seen AWS suffer blackouts and some of the most popular and important websites suddenly become unavailable. That's the problem with having a single node in the center, like the drawing on the left. But if you decentralize the internet, multiple nodes can fail without the entire system falling apart. Okay, but why would people be motivated to run the infrastructure for a decentralized web? If there's no central corporation for you to pay to host your website or store your data, who's going to host it? Who's going to shoulder the cost of the massive amount of hardware it takes to run the web? One answer is Filecoin. Filecoin is the decentralized storage network that I believe is a foundational technology for the decentralized web. Filecoin is a peer-to-peer -peer network that stores files with built-in economic incentives to ensure files are stored reliably over time. Some people call it Airbnb for file storage. Miners rent out their storage space and earn Filecoin for doing so, and users spend Filecoin to store files. It's an incentive layer for the decentralized web. After years of work, the Filecoin mainnet went live last Thursday, and today the network surpassed 
600 petabytes of storage capacity on the network. That's over 10 billion YouTube videos or more than 10 times the entire written works of mankind in all languages from the beginning of recorded history to today. Which brings me to the Filecoin Foundation. In 2017, the creators of Filecoin envisioned that an independent Filecoin Foundation would serve as the long-term governance body for the Filecoin ecosystem. They gave the foundation the mandate to grow an open ecosystem for decentralized storage and to give developers an open and sustainable platform to build, enhance, and monetize those services. They wanted the foundation to be modeled on foundations for other open source projects, like the Apache Software Foundation, the Mozilla Foundation, and the Linux Foundation. Today, the Filecoin Foundation is an independent organization on a mission to accelerate the growth of Filecoin and related technologies to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. It's an ambitious mission, and I want to tell you about our goals and strategy for accomplishing that mission. Our first goal is building and supporting the Filecoin community. There are so many stakeholders in the Filecoin ecosystem, miners, developers, researchers, token holders, clients, users. We want to support all of them. Miners are essential to the functioning of the Filecoin ecosystem. To date, more than 400 miners in 34 countries and six continents have onboarded storage to the network to get us to 600 petabytes. We want to understand miners' needs and collaborate closely with miners, and we're creating a miner working group to ensure a direct line of communication between the foundation and Filecoin miners. Developers are also a key part of the community. Filecoin is of course open source and more than 1000 developers have worked on more than 230 projects that are built on Filecoin. The foundation will be offering dev grants to inspire more contributors to solve open problems and engage with the Filecoin project and to reward ongoing contributions to, that add value to the Filecoin network. The foundation is currently administering wave five dev grants that will total up to 250,000 US dollars. The foundation will also be engaging with developers through hackathons and accelerators. We will also be working to accelerate the growth of the Filecoin ecosystem through partnerships. Filecoin already has an impressive ecosystem of more than 85 organizations that are collaborating on the Filecoin network to build applications, developer tooling, infrastructure, and more. And as an open source project, it's vital that Filecoin has transparent community-driven governance. The foundation will be facilitating that governance process, including the Filecoin Improvement Proposals process, which we call FIPS. FIPS play a central role in how changes happen and are documented on Filecoin. The FIP process is the way any community member can propose changes to the Filecoin network, and the community can discuss network upgrades and adopt changes. FIPS act as the source of truth for the community. The FIP process is based on the Ethereum Improvement Proposals process, the Bitcoin Improvement Proposals process, and the Python Enhancement Proposals process. The Filecoin Foundation has a sister charitable organization, the Filecoin for the Foundation for the Decentralized Web. The mission of this foundation is to ensure the permanent preservation of humanity's most important information by stewarding the development of open source software and open protocols for decentralized data storage and retrieval networks. The Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web sees Filecoin as a foundational technology that is part of the broader decentralized web ecosystem and seeks to support that entire decentralized web community. We are also dedicated to funding the development of open source tools that will be the backbone of tomorrow's decentralized web. And that doesn't just mean supporting exciting new projects and features. It also means consistent funding for infrastructure upgrades and security on existing projects. We're also dedicated to education about the importance of the decentralized web and changing the conversation about modern technologies. We want people to understand how centralized intermediaries act as single points of failure and can undermine privacy and expression. We want people to understand how decentralizing the web can preserve humanity's most important information. And we think we have the team to do it. The foundation already has an incredible and growing full-time staff. Uh, Clara Sow was recently the co-founder and board member of the Trust and Safety Professional Association. She's been a Mozilla and Google Fellow, White House Presidential Innovation Fellow, Executive Director of the U.S. Congressional App Challenge, and the Director of the Congressional Internet Caucus Advisory Committee. Megan Kleiman was co-founder and Chief Operating Officer of 3Scan, a biotech startup that developed 3D robotic microscopes with the mission of enabling big data analysis of human tissue. Uh, she took that company from idea 
to a value of $160 million. She also ran an open data project in Afghanistan that made available academic and military research. Philip Banhart was an early stage investor at Blue Yard Capital, where he helped to shape investment in distributed web technologies. We also have an incredible group of board members and advisors. Uh, as part of Liftoff Week, we'll have a panel introducing many of them this Friday at 2.55 Pacific time. It's hard to summarize the incredible accomplishments of this group, but I'll try. Uh, Rainey Reitman is a board member of the Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web. She's the Chief Program Officer at the Electronic Frontier Foundation and a prominent digital rights activist. Brian Balendorf is a board member of both the Filecoin Foundation and the Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web. He was the co-founder of the Apache Web Server Project and is the Executive Director of Hyperledger. He serves on the board of directors for EFF and the Mozilla Foundation. Joe Lubin is an advisor. He's a co-founder of Ethereum and the founder and CEO of Consensus, which builds infrastructure, tools, and applications on Ethereum. Kristen Smith is also an advisor. She's the executive director of the Blockchain Association. Danny O'Brien uh, is an advisor to the Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web. He heads long-term strategy for the Electronic Frontier Foundation and helped to found the Open Rights Group in the UK. Katie Biber is an advisor who's currently the general counsel of Brex formerly the general counsel of Anchorage and serves on Anchorage's board. Georgia Quinn is the current general counsel of Anchorage and the former general counsel of CoinList. Sandra Rowe is an advisor. She's the CEO of the Global Blockchain Business Council and a founding member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And Alex Fierce is an expert in content policy and is the former general counsel and head of trust and safety at Medium. He's now general counsel at Neuralink and leads Murmuration Labs a project aimed at fostering trust within distributed blockchain projects, including the Filecoin network. And we have others to be announced in the coming weeks, believe it or not. Um, please do join us on Friday to hear each of them speak about why they are part of the Filecoin Foundation or the Filecoin Foundation for the Decentralized Web. We are so excited <laughs> to be engaging with the Filecoin community uh, and the thousands of Filecoin developers, technologists, and users all over the world. Um, please connect with us. Um, I'm not going to be taking questions today, but uh, I will look look for questions this week and we'll be answering them on Friday. Uh, attend our events and hackathons, submit dev grant proposals, propose a FIP, dive into our code base, contribute to a project, or, or just reach out. Um, I truly feel that Filecoin Liftoff Week could be a historic moment for the decentralized web, and I am so excited to get to play a part in building it with you. Um, so back to Angie. Thank you so, so much, Marta. And uh, we're all so excited uh, to see what's next for the foundation. And I, I think we can't wait to hear more from um, the staff on board this Friday.